Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Today we will be making the second design in the Winter Tail Ornament Collection. It's another angel and she's fun and easy. So let's get started. To create this angel, we will begin with a 20 millimeter face. You can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face in my Focus on Faces video. I also have 12 inches of 1 16th inch satin ribbon and a spool of six inch wide tulle. So I'm gonna pull off two lengths of tulle, each about 15 or 18 inches long. It doesn't matter, we're gonna trim it anyway, right? And then I'm gonna fold these two in half and tie them off in the center with the ribbon. Now I'll send these ribbon ends through the bead, the hole in the bead, from the bottom to the top. I'm sliding this on to the tool, just like this. That kind of squishes it a little bit. And then I'm gonna back it off and add a touch, just a smudge of hot glue right here in the back. And then I'm gonna slide this back on just until this little knot is right at the top of her head. And then I'll tie the ends off into an overhand knot. And that's our hanging loop and we are ready to go. Now for the dress, the dress is fun. We have, this is um, the Winter Tail Fabric Collection and I've chosen two four inch squares of this stripe. The stripes are already on the diagonal. So that is helpful. And then I'm going to match up these stripes, which can be tricky, but I'll just do the best I can and then sew these together. I'm looking at this winter tail fabric and for, here, let's do it like this. Okay, you can see these angels. This is what we used in our last project. These sort of standing angels that are leaning over like this. But then there's these other angels that are sort of flying and fa they're facing one another. I mean, I wanna use this section where these angels are actually facing each other, not this where they're facing outward. So um, I'm very limited. Uh, you can see that I already cut one section, but then since I'm fussy cutting, it's kind of heartbreaking that I can only get one out of this fabric. And so I'm going to cut right here, five inches wide and a half an inch above the halos of these angels and a half an inch below the bottom edge of the dresses here. So right in here. I have a five inch wide ruler and I'm going to set the center here, the center line and line it up with this little, little mark here. And then half inch above the top of her head, I'm gonna draw a line. Hmm. I think I'll use my silver pen. It's a little bit darker than necessary, but I just want you to be able to see it, right? And then I'll move it and still um, doing this two and a half inch center line right there. And then a half an inch below the dress like this. Now I know this may be hard for you to see, but I can see the silver line. And so I'm gonna carefully cut this out. Now, I want you to know that this is a little um, bit generous. I want a little bit of flexibility in terms of my seam allowance and trimming this a little bit later. But for now, it's about two and a half inches wide. I mean, two and a half inches tall and five inches wide. That looks pretty good. 
So now I'm going to sew these together and this is going to be the center of her dress with the, <laughs> wait, okay. So this will be like this and then I'll trim this to, to a five inch square. I'll be right back. So here's how this looks. The points are lined up pretty nicely, but I had to sort of stagger them a little bit. So I will press this open and then trim this off a little bit. And then I'm going to center this and sew this to the bottom like that. Here's how it looks after sewing the, the bottom motif to the stripes. I like my stripes to go like this. I think of it like a Christmas tree, so it's kind of pointy at the top and then the branches go down like that. But if you did it like this, that looks fine too. I've done sometimes I do them like that. I just prefer this way. This little motif here, the, I don't know what that's called, but that's lined up. And now I'm going to trim this. So I'm gonna place this five inch square here and then trace around and trim this excess striped fabric. And this will be the front center panel for the angel. That looks good. Now I'm going to press this, I think I'm gonna press this flat down and flat and then add some red rickrack. You know, I, I've done this different ways. I kind of like the red rickrack, but there's also um, this color, which kind of goes with the sleeve. Should we do that? Okay, I think I'll use this color. I don't know what it's called. You can see I got this as kind of vintage. It came like this, <laughs> and how could I resist, right? So I think I'll use this color. Let's call this sort of like a geranium color which means I have to switch the thread on my machine. So I'll press this and I will center this right over the seam and then I will top stitch this with matching thread. Okay, so here's how this looks. And then I have two five inch squares of this print also from Winter Tail and also that we used in the last Winter Tail Angel. I'm going to attach these, just seam them up with a quarter inch seam allowance to each side. Then I'll press them to the dark side and I'll be back. Here we go, here's how this looks. Here it is on the back. And now I'm going to add some lace to the bottom hem. I like this kind of lace. I get this at Joanne Fabrics. And let's see, this is probably three quarters of an inch wide. And I'm just going to you know, place it along the hem and top stitch it. I'm not gonna fold up this hem or finish it in any way. But I think I'll overlap it by about a quarter of an inch or maybe a little bit more. Kind of the center of these flowers. And I'll be right back. Here's how it looks. We've got the two angled pieces. We've got the angels well centered and up high enough above the lace. This little trim, then the two sides, and then this lace along the hem. So now I'm just going to fold these together and stitch up this, which will be the back seam. Again, I'm using quarter inch seam allowance. This is the Winter Tail Collection, and I was inspired by this particular little image to create this design. But of course, you could do something like this with any fabric. Look through your stash and see if you have something with a, you know, sort of a horizontal design that you could feature like this. Here's my dress, and now I'm going to gather up the top edge with a double strand of quilting thread. I'll just go in and out, in and out, through a single layer of fabric, and then all the way around to where I started. When I get to a seam like this, I like for the seam to go down. So the seam is caught in the bottom part of the fold. And 
before I pull it all the way tight, I'm going to place it over the body of the angel. Like this. I'm going to center her face above that center seam in the front. And pull it tight. That looks good. I want to make sure I can see these angels and that the neck is nice and tight. I'll wrap it a few times and then stitch through back and forth a few times and secure it in the back. So I'll go across from side to side and then back. This is where it's really nice to use a thimble and then I'll secure my thread in the back. I center my back seam, center my front seam, pull this down and trim this excess tool. Don't trim it too short. You don't want to accidentally cut your lace. Now we're going to add a collar. I'm going to cut 18 inches of this collar lace, which is about three quarters of an inch wide. I'm going to fold under the first edge like that. And then I have a double strand of quilting thread. So I'll secure the knot there in the fold and then just gather up the top edge. I'm sewing right below the header. There we go. Now I'll place the center of the gathered lace beneath her chin and the ends I'm going to join together in the back, back here. If you're not using a thimble and you find it difficult to push the needle through and by the time you finish the project Hold on, I gotta focus here for a second. <laughs> then when, by the time you finish the project, you're finding that the tip of your finger is sore. You might wanna just try a thimble. It's, you know, you can get the hang of it and it saves a lot of pain. There we go. So I'm pulling this as tight as I can. That looks good. And then I'm just going to join the ends together in the back. Stitching through a few times to secure the thread. Okay, that looks good. Let's add her hair. I'm using auburn hair again for this collection. One of them is loopy, like this, and one of them is fuzzy. Okay, hold the end and wrap one and two and three and Wrap the center. And tie it off. I'm gonna do a square knot in the center. If you're using a single yarn, you will wrap six times. So now I have a figure eight bundle with six loops on either side. And I'll repeat. This, I'm not saying this is the world's greatest way to make hair, but it is pretty fast and pretty easy and pretty fun. One and two and three and. I'm tying this again in the center. If you have trouble with this, um, usually the problem is that you're not tying, you're not taking a complete, let's see, it goes, does it go this way? 
a complete revolution around the center with that, um, with that top thread. Anyway, I do have instructions for the hair technique in a video called Ruby's Hair Technique. Now I'm going to squeeze out some glue right in front of the center of the hanging loop. So like that. And then I'll press the knot, the center of the first bundle into that glue. Just hold it for a second. And then I'm going to add some more glue to the side of the head right here, like that. And then twist toward the back and press that into the glue on the side of the head. And hold it for a second. Then repeat the same thing. Add some glue, twist toward the back, and press it into the glue. Add some glue, twist toward the back, and press it into the glue. Now for the second bundle, this is for the back of the head, I'm just gonna squeeze out a penny of glue back here, just fill in that whole area and press this to the top and just glue this down. Usually I do the back first, but this is good for you to see, right? All right, I'll squeeze out my glue, push this in, and then press the loops down in the back. The back does not have to be perfect because it's hidden by the wings. But you do need to make sure that all the strands, like these are loose, right? So I need to make sure those are glued down. That looks good, let's add her halo. For her halo, I'm just going to cut two inches of 20 gauge wire, with my wire cutters, and then wrap it around my thimble just to make it nice and round. Like that, and then I'll add a drop of glue to each end. And I will press the ends into the hair. Kind of like that. I bent it a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. That's good. That looks good. Now we'll add a little decoration to the front of her collar. This is red and white baker's twine. I threaded it onto a needle and sewed through the collar. I'm just gonna tie this into a little bow. If you like, you can tie the bow first and just glue it to the front of the collar or even under the collar. A solid red string would also work that I just don't have right now. And I'm gonna tie an overhand knot into the end of each streamer to prevent fraying. Now I do have a little scrap of this lace and I could add one of these flowers right here, but I just thought maybe for a little bit of dimension, I would try these. These are from Tim Holtz and you can get them at, you know, Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. So I trimmed the stems to about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna add some glue there and just press them to the top of the bow. Okay, so there we go. I have my bow, my streamers, and three little white paper flowers there underneath her chin. Now let's make the wings. 
For the wings, I have a four and three quarter inch circle of fusible midway interfacing. I'm going to use this print, which is also from the Winter Tail collection. So I'll press this and iron this on and cut it out. Here's how it looks. This is the right side of the fabric and this is the interfacing. So now I'm lining up the grain of the fabric and I'm going to fold it in half like this and then stitch all the way around the curved edge. Here we go, this is stitched all the way around and I will trim the seam allowance with my pinking shears like this. And then I need an opening for turning. So I'm gonna fold this in half and draw a little cross right here. It's about a half an inch below like this. So um, it starts about a half an inch below the fold. And then I'm gonna pinch this right here on the horizontal part of the cross. And then just clip it like this. And you don't have to be stingy on the size of this opening. You can make it pretty big because it's going to be glued right there to the back of her head after we turn it. Um, so I'm going to trim it with my pinking shears, turn it through this opening and press it flat. I use a chopstick to kind of push out the corners. And there's all kinds of tools you could use for that. That looks good, and then I kind of pull the chopstick around that curved edge to make sure it's completely turned right side out. That looks pretty good, now I'll press it. It's important to remind yourself that the, oh, the side with the opening is the front. You know, it's easy to think that's the back, but this is the front. And now I'm going to add a decorative stitch around the edge. I'm gonna use red thread, and I like to do a scallop. So I'll do a scallop, decorate, decorative stitch all the way around. Here we go. It's not perfect, but it'll definitely get the job done. Okay, so now I'm just going to glue this to the back of her head. I'm putting the glue right over that cut open cross there and then I kind of try to get the head centered with the same amount of wing showing on either side making sure it's nice and secure and this angel is complete Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my designs, please like, share, and subscribe.